Make sure to be a member on the channel, link is in the description. Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Uh, so let's thank our members, a lot of new members, so thank you guys, Salty Guy, Hubert, Abrapa, Chala, RS, Atropub, Patrick, Silami, Vivi, Lafush, thank you, it helps a lot. And let's get into it, so uh, make sure to sub and join our Discord as well. So today we are going to finally talk about the tornado, the Panavia tornado. It's an aircraft that a lot of people were actually expecting for a long time, to be honest. And a lot of people in the comments already, always said that I needed to do a video on that. So instead of doing a vote, I just decided to actually talk a little bit about it, okay? So we're going to talk a lot on its performance, on its variants, uh, on the War Thunder variants that can be added, you know, uh, because they're not, all the variants should not be added, just like in the F-16 video and on the MiG-29 video, the MiG-25 video, uh, not all variants should be added, just some of them. So let's talk a lot on these. So first of all, what the Panavia Tornado is. So it's a family of twin engine aircraft, you know, uh, there's many variants of it. Uh, it is twin engine, as I said, it has variable wings, which is very, very cool. And it is multi-role, I mean, technically it is multi-role, uh, because, you know, it has many, many different uh, missions and types of uh, stuff that you can do with it. Uh, it was jointly developed by uh, Italy, United Kingdom and West Germany. Uh, it was built by Panavia Aircraft GmbH, uh, which was basically a tri-national consortium consisting of uh, the British Aerospace Company uh, Corporation, um, the MBB of Germ uh, West Germany, Messerschmitt uh, Bowman, Bowman something, and Ari 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 Italia from Italy. Okay, so it is uh, basically like. A the Eurofighter was built, the Tornado was built as well. Uh, it first flew in 14th of August 1974 and it was introduced into service during 1979, 80, 81, during that time, depending on the Air Force, depending on many uh, things. Uh, the Royal Saudi Air Force is the only export operator of the Tornado besides the three original nations. Uh, and yeah, it was used in many, many wars, the Gulf War in 91, Bosnian War, Kosovo War, the Iraqi War uh, in Libya during the 2011 Libyan Civil War, and as well as uh, smaller roles in, in Afghanistan, Yemen and Syria. Uh, a total of 990 aircraft were built, so a lot of them just short of 1,000 uh, for just for such small countries, uh, I mean, it's a lot of them built, so pretty cool. Um, and yeah, the, the history behind it is basically in the 1960s, there were many consortiums and designs made uh, by countries, uh, but many of them withdrawn from projects and then other, other, another ones merge, uh, emerged. So yeah, they had a lot of uh, things and the objective was to actually make an aircraft that is um, multinational so it's a little bit easier to build a little bit cheaper for each nation uh, to basically all of the united europe uh, i mean the european union uh, use you know so in 1968 west germany uh, the netherlands uh, belgium italy and canada uh, made the initially called multi-role aircraft uh, program which was initially, uh, the objective was to substitute the F-104s uh, used by these nations. And it was later renamed as the Multi-Role Combat Aircraft, the MRCA. This project, at the end of 1968, Canada and Belgium withdrew from the project because they needed other projects, they needed other things. Uh, Belgium actually went for uh, the F-16 later, and Canada, I don't remember what aircraft they got, but anyway, they just didn't want the this MRCA uh, project, okay? Uh, the Netherlands pulled out of the project in 1970, and yeah, it was basically this. And the design was actually being built uh, by these three nations, okay? So yeah, it was built a 40 something, 42.5% made 
by the UK, then 42%, 0.5% made by Germany, and 15% made by Italy. So Italy has a minor role, but it is one of the major um, users of the aircraft. Uh, so yeah, um, a little bit on its performance and stuff like that. Obviously, uh, the contract for the first batch aircraft was signed in 1976, and the first flight of production aircraft was on uh, 10 of July. 1979 okay so late 70s uh the engines were the rb199 which was a rolls royce engine it was actually a very interesting thing that they actually the uk almost withdrew from the project because they were uh, trying out uh, an american engine in if the uk didn't get the engine uh, they would just withdraw from the project because they wanted the the turbo fan that they got and yeah it was very good engine actually to be honest it was a very very good engine 70 i mean the the powers goes from 66 kilonewtons to around 74 kilonewtons so depending on the version you know but it's around 70 kilonewtons it is turbo fan which is very modern and very efficient has thrust reversal which is a very good thing and yeah it has some problems it had some problems in high altitudes uh with the low turbine speed and the comp uh, in the compressor uh low turbine speed and a low uh, speed on the compressor normally it did not provide enough pressure to hold back the combustion pressure and it would result in a violent vibration as the combustion pressure backfired into the intake so to avoid this effect on the engines uh at higher altitudes and stuff like that engine controls would automatically increase the minimal idle setting as altitude increased until a very high altitude the idle setting was so high that it was close to maximum drive thrust so this is a very interesting thing so they had a lot of problems to be honest developing this aircraft uh, at some point you know uh, delays and stuff like that in the 70s were a problem because there were a couple of things that they couldn't figure it out together with the Concorde being um, a lot of things, a lot of projects were being uh, developed uh, with a lot of things that were being discovered by the Concorde. So, um, yeah, until those things got actually fully developed, they got some problems in the aircraft and stuff like that. The fly-by-wire, it was very limited at first. And it even the, the German part uh, of the development was severely, <laughs> uh, I mean complicated because the head of the MBB or the Messerschmitt company in, in Germany was actually a Soviet spy so this is a very funny story also from 1970 I think until 1984 or 1960 something until 1984 he was just a, a spy dev I mean giving a lot of things to the Russians so yeah it is just a very rich history that this aircraft has I mean it's very very funny even uh, but yeah, it has the refueling probes, of obviously it has fly-by-wire, it has, um, normally uh, you can use an, an automatic control of the wing sweeps, or you can use the pilot controls, just like the F-14 and just like the uh, MiG-23. I don't think the MiG-23 actually had an automatic flight uh, wing uh, sweep system, but I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, but yeah. Normally the sweep angles would be between 25 degrees and 67 and I think even in the ADV it was a little bit more for the more high speed stuff. Uh, the weapons, the loadout, pylons, uh, a, a new technology were developed for the wing pylons, you know, uh, so that they could pivot, uh, pivot, I don't know what you call it, uh, in the angle of the aircraft, in the direction of flight, so that the actual pylons could be fully uh, used you know not liking the MiG-23 for example that it's not fully used and then uh, it could just you know use any payload under the wings and the not having a, a max or a minimum uh, wing sweep that it could use you know uh, it doesn't matter if you would uh, go fully swept back or fully swept, swept forward uh, the pylons were just maintain the right direction automatically and you could use the weapons uh, normally okay uh, it's a thing that the Russians um, actually uh, put it on the Su-24 
so yeah pretty interesting and pretty uh pretty all right you know a uh, very good uh, technology um it can perform short takeoffs and landings uh with full flaps full you know slats opened and 25 degrees of wings together with the thrust reversal it can do sh uh, stall landings uh, so very short landings uh, and it has some very interesting features all of them are be placed uh, and it can do hands-off terrain following which is a very interesting concept that they can do i mean the objective the, the first objective of this aircraft was to be a uh, low altitude uh, into the enemy's you know in, um, bomber you know so they the british and the germans uh, acknowledged the government acknowledged that it was something that the russians could it uh, could defeat the russians in some areas and it was very effective against the russians this type of tactic low flying altitudes and stuff like that a uh, very fast aircraft with nuclear bombs and stuff so yeah obviously can take nuclear bombs and this is the interdictor uh, strike mission was the main mission of the tornado okay um, and even had uh, a radar very interesting radar that has a navigation together with detection at the same time which is very interesting uh, of course he had a different radar for the ADV the AI 24 Fox Hunter that I'm going to talk about later and the weapon loadouts I mean there are many 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 uh, of them and the main ones are obviously uh, stuff like uh, normal NATO stuff, you know, so he has various types of bombs depending on the country, missiles and stuff like that. The main normal IR missiles will be the AIM-9Ls. I don't found, I didn't found anything about using other AIM-9s, so maybe the AIM-9M and after that the AIM-132. Uh, uh, but uh, normally the AIM-9L is the main IR missile and in the ADV the sky flashes that I'm going to talk about later it can take laser guided bombs non guided stuff bombs and rockets anti ship stuff uh, missiles anti radiation missiles uh, like the harm missile and stuff like that as well as specialized weapons such as anti personnel mines anti runway munitions anti tank uh, mines and stuff like that cluster munitions whatever you want to put in this aircraft it can take it so very very interesting very cool and yeah this is for the normal variant uh, the, the the general idea behind the aircraft uh, it is very heavy to be honest and uh, it's not supposed to be turning okay so it is an aircraft that is supposed to be flying very i mean with the wings fully swept forward you can actually turn it very well with it probably but uh, it's still a, a small wing so it don't create a lot of lift becoming a little bit of a problem uh, in turning capabilities but the, the engines are very strong I mean it could take up to a hundred and forty kilonewtons with two engines so it's very strong uh, very fast you know and the, sweep, the sweeping uh, wings will help a lot uh, the weapons obviously the radar everything is very good it's just not a very very good aircraft for turning apparently okay um, so yeah, l now let's talk about its variants. It has a lot of variants. Uh, the three main, three main variants are the IDS, the ECR, and the ADV. And each of them, like all the aircraft that I already talked about it here in this uh, show, <laughs> uh, it has sub sub variants. You know. So uh, let's talk a little bit on the IDS first. So as I said before, this is the main version of the Tornado. It's the main aircraft that always was used. You know and all the countries they use the, these aircraft use this version because it is the, the main tornado is this one okay uh, so yeah it, it's the interdictor strike mission one uh, it carry only the nines you know uh, as air-to-air -air weapons uh, but in the future it could use the SRAM or the AIM-132 uh, which is the new AIM-9 kind of uh, from new generations uh, and it has two BK-27 Mauser cannons, uh, 30 millimeters with 180 uh, rounds each. Uh, apparently it, it was a revolver, a revolver cannon, uh, just like an Aiden or something like that, but uh, the fully more developed. I think it's German or Austrian, I don't remember, Mauser. Uh, anyway, 1979, the first variant was released. 
so the GR1. So this is the variant, uh, that it's the main variant, everybody use this. This is the normal one that I said, M9s, M9s, you know, uh, not a lot of guided stuff, you know, for lasers, stuff like that, but still could get it. A uh, lot of ammunition, a lot of stuff like this. This is the variant that I think all the nations should be added, Italy, um, and UK and Germany. Uh, so yeah, but uh, we have other versions uh, for the GR1. Uh, we have the GR1A, which is a reconnaissance version with the FLIR systems and other systems for reconnaissance. Uh, but it doesn't have a cannon due to these systems. Uh, so it's not a very good aircraft to actually be added to War Thunder. Uh, we have the GR1B, which is an uh, anti-ship uh, version which can carry 4 Sea Eagle missiles. Uh, it doesn't have a radar capable of ship tracking, so the detection and the firing resolution of the, these missiles are made by the missile itself. But it's still very interesting, very good, and yeah. Uh, in the 90s, 96, I think, uh, they made a MLU, MLU upgrade, so the midlife upgrade, called the GR4. So they picked up, uh, obviously in 1996, all the tornadoes were just already produced. No, they were not being produced anymore. I think they were produced until 1987 or 88, something like that. So in 1996, they actually did an upgrade, a midlife upgrade to actually improve the maximum uh, amount of years that it could serve uh, in the Air Forces uh, to beyond 2010. And yeah, one of the major things it was that op obviously has new avionics, new data link, which helps a lot, integrated uh, paveway bombs, you know, so it has a FLIR system uh, from the get go and stuff like that. Uh, wide angle HUD, I don't know what this means exactly, but you know, uh, possibility to use NVGs, you can carry the Storm Shadow missile, the Brainstorm. Uh, the avionics and more stuff are upgraded as well. So it's just a, just like the F-16 got an MLU upgrade, the Tornado got one as well, called the GR-4. And we have the GR-4A, which is the reconnaissance version, the GR-1A, but with the MLU package as well. Uh, no cannon as well and stuff like that. The normal GR-4 has two cannons, 30 millimeters as well. So. Yeah, this is the IDS versions, we have five of them, so remember, GR1, normal one, GR1A, reconnaissance version, no cannons, GR1B, uh, steel cannon, but an anti-ship, uh, GR4, MLU upgrade, and GR4A, MLU upgrade for the GR1A. So, very simple, very good. Uh, after that, we have the ECR version, uh, which is the electronic combat and reconnaissance version, uh, which is... a very different version, it has basically just one version of it, so it doesn't have any sub, sub variants, you know. Uh, it is made for seed missions, okay? So it was first delivered in 1990 and it was not used by the UK because the UK actually got the GR1A, uh, which eventually used seed uh, as well with the harm missiles. And so, yeah, but for Italy and Germany, they actually used this version. Uh, they had sensors to detect enemy radars, and it was equipped with the anti-radiation AGM-88 harm missiles. Uh, only Italy and Germany use it, I think. Uh, maybe the Saudi uh, Arabs used it, but I couldn't find it exactly. But yeah, Italy uh, having to use the reconnaissance pods uh, being an IDS converted uh, to uh, ECR. Okay, so the German ones uh, don't have a cannon. <laughs> So yeah, that's a problem as well. And the Italian ones are need to use a reconnaissance pod because they are an IDS converted to ECR standard. So very interesting in a different version. I don't think this should be added to Wharton, but still, maybe in the far future. But yeah. And let's talk about the main variant. So uh, not the main variant because the IDS is actually the main variant, but the, the variant that everybody wants to see, which is the ADV. The AEV is the air defense version, uh, the interceptor version. It was made to substitute the English Electric Lightning and the F4M or the FGR-1 in the Air Force, the Royal Air Force. Uh, it has only one cannon with 180 rounds, so they removed one of the cannons. 
uh, it has a slightly longer air brakes in the f uh, and a, f uh, a fuselage stretch of uh, stretch of 1.36 meters to allow to the carriage of four sky flash missiles uh, even though with that it has a very interesting prospect because of that it can carry basically 900 liters more of fuel so yeah it has more fuel than the other ones uh, and it has some differences in avionics and some other systems like the radar and stuff so yeah uh, let's talk a little bit about the radar first. So instead of having the normal radar ground mapping and stuff like that, that he had the normal tornado, the IDS, it has the AI-24 Fox Hunter radar, which is, I'm going to put it on the screen right now, it has a very, very good range. It even outranges the F-15. So it was very effective. It had its problems. Uh, it was very problematic at first, but yeah, it's... It's usable and very, very long range. Uh, you know, it can t have TWS, 20 targets, and yeah, just an amazing, amazing radar. This is the best feature of the ADV, to be honest. Very modern, very good, very, very good. And yeah, this is basically the main difference. You know, instead of having the normal old radars used for other stuff, it actually uses an air to air radar, pull stopper, obviously. 160 kilometers as I said, uh, TWS, 20 targets, very good radar. Um, this is the main thing, okay? Uh, obviously to take the Sky Flash missile. Uh, so we have three variants of it. We have the F2, the F2A and the F3. But we can kind of ignore the F2 and the F2A. Uh, the F2 was a no radar version basically because there were a couple of problems with the Fox Hunter radar at the, the development at first. So it could only carry two AIM-9s and it was only built 18 models of it. It's kind of a prototype to be honest. They even put it a uh, lead weight on the nose so that it can actually fly and test the aircraft uh, for weight limits and see, uh, you know, gravity uh, center limits. So yeah, kind of weird. And the F2A is a F2 converted to F3 that I'm going to talk about. but they just converted one uh, basically was uh, to be sold to the UK, to the Royal uh, Saudi Air Force but they eventually just bought the F3 uh, if I'm not mistaken so yeah but then we have the F3 which is the main variant this is the variant that we should get in War Thunder for the British and for <coughs> the Italian uh, it's the main variant of the Interceptor uh, 1985 just one cannon, the BK-27, as I said before, 180 rounds, uh, four A9s instead of two, you know, so under the wings, four A9s, and under the fuselage, it can carry four sky flashes. The sky flashes I'm going to talk about a, li a little bit later, but yeah, what variants they used and stuff like that. But yeah, four sky flashes, four A9s, and yeah, upgrades made in the 90s with limited ability to use the AIM-120, with only two mid-course updates in trajectory and many other limitations. So basically in the 90s, they actually tried to integrate the AIM-120 to the Fox Hunter radar, but they, have, they had a lot of problems and it was very limited, which is, in War Thunder, a very good thing, because this is a very, very uh, valuable addition, I think, uh, for the tornado to be actually be competitive for some nations i think uh this should be maybe one of the first aircraft to actually receive the aim 120 because it was kind of limited you know so the aim 120 would not be op maybe in here because you would have to basically maintain the lock on the target almost like a, like a, um, a semi-active missile uh, it could not do off par or anything like that. It doesn't go active from the get-go. It's it's very problematic, the AIM-120 in the 90s for this aircraft. So this could be an upgrade. Once we get MiG-29s with more capable MiG-29s, maybe more capable F-14s or F-16s and stuff like that, we can actually receive that as an upgrade with the AIM-120, with the two mid-course updates and stuff like that. And yeah. Uh, in 2003, they upgraded uh, so that it was completely integrated uh, with the M120. So eventually, they, you know, they upgraded the aircraft enough so that the M120 would work perfectly. 
so yeah, but uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the Sky Flash missile. So uh, technically, we have three variants of the Sky Flash missile. We have the 3000, the 5000, and the 6000. So uh, the in-game version that we have right now, it's the called the 3000 free temp uh, missile, uh, which is the version that we have in game. As I said, it is the Sky Flash. I mean, the normal Sky Flash. I mean, it has. It, it is basically uh, aim. 7E2 but with a monopose uh, seeker which is way more effective than the seeker on an AIM-7F to be honest. So the only problem with the Sky Flash right now it's actually the range of it because if we get an engine uh, similar to the AIM-7F on the Sky Flash uh, we, it would be very very OP, it would be very very good. Uh, the AIM-7F didn't have that. I think only in game uh, the top missiles uh, only the R24 has it, uh, the Aspide and the Skyflash, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, uh, pretty interesting. The AIM-7M was the first one that actually brought that to the Americans. So, But yeah, it helps a lot with ground clutter and stuff like that. That's probably why we lose lock so, mu so many times and the missile goes <laughs> completely kaput sometimes uh, in the AIM-7M. E2 and M7F and stuff like that. But anyway, so we have three variants. Uh, so we have right now in game we have the 3000 pre temp, uh, which is the exact missile that we have right now. Uh, then they made an upgrade for that missile for the tornado. So the F4M, F4K, the FGR2, and the F, uh, FG1 never used those uh, upgrade versions. And the first upgrade version is the 5000 temp, which is the missile that we have in game. But it has hydraulic trapezes to launch the missile from the tornado. Uh, it doesn't feel like it changes much, but uh, they say that the range is a little bit better. The energy of the missile will be a little bit better because of these trapezes, which will make the, the missile go a little bit better into the airflow of the air, you know, uh, instead of going to the turbulence of the aircraft. So I think it's a very good addition. I think this would be the main missile, the first missile that we get in the tornado uh, because it's just a normal missile that we have right now but with the hydraulic trapezes as I said so it will be a little tiny bit better in energy wise and then in the late 80s, in 1988 they actually made uh, a modification to the motors of the engine uh, of the missile um, so yeah we have the, six, uh, the 6000 super temp which is the same missile as before, but it has a different motor with a second, uh, sec, uh, four second burn time, plus a seven second booster. Uh, this would be similar to what we have in the M7F, but with a monopulse radar, um, you know, passive radar on the missile, and together with the trapezes. So it would probably be the best. Uh, semi-active missile in the long range and a very very good one at short ranges as well uh, I don't know if you would be comparable to the R24 maybe you would maybe it would be better I think it would be a little bit better but still we have to test that out when it's added to War Thunder but it is yeah these are the things I mean the 3000 pre temp it's something that we should not see in the tornado just the 5000 temp and then an upgrade to the 6000 Super Temp, which is the same missile as before. Very good monopulse ra uh, radar, you know, uh, passive radar. And together with a very good 4 second burn time, together with a 7 second booster, similar to the M7F. Okay? Uh, to be honest, I think still the M7F would have a little bit more energy, but we have to see because. Uh, in game right now, the M7F has a 4.5 second burn together with an 11 second booster. But maybe this is just because the Super Temp has more power, so it burns a little bit more. And then it would have more energy. It would be better, for example, it would be better until 30 kilometers, 20 kilometers against the M7F. And to 30 kilometers beyond, the M7F would be a little bit uh, better. So yeah, it's a thing that we have to consider. Uh, so yeah, the F3 with the 5000 temp and then after that the 6000 super temp. Uh, so let's get to the last um, uh, part of the video.
the variants that we should see in War Thunder. So we have the UK, Germany and Italy uh, as the main nations that use these aircraft. Let's talk a little bit about the UK, the United Kingdom first. It used everything besides the ECR, so it used a version um, from the IDS as an ECR, as I said before. Uh, but in-game, I think we should see two variants, at least two variants. Uh, the GR1 first, as the IDS, uh, at first, you know, with an upgrade version. I mean, you could carry just the normal GR1 stuff, and then at the, at the end, in the, in the Tier 4 upgrade, inside the upgrades of the aircraft, you can have an upgrade called uh, GR4, and then you will get uh, NVDs and all the other stuff that I talked about it, or maybe even being uh, another aircraft, so the GR1 first, and then the GR4 later. Uh, they can do e either or, either or, you know. So it would be interesting to see. Uh, they were made to uh, actually uh, substitute the Buccaneer and the Vulcan. So basically, they would mean it, the IDS would be under the the Buccaneer right now. I think it would be a very good place. And then an ADV variant as well. Obviously, the F3 with four M9Ls and two versions of the Sky Flash, so carrying four Sky Flashes, obviously, but two versions of it. Initially the 5000 Temp, as I said, same missile, different launch mechanism, which is improves a little bit of the energy, and then an upgrade tier 4, upgrade to the Super Temp missile, okay, uh, which is the 6000, uh, yeah, with an upgrade. Or, and we've, I mean, we can have an upgrade as well, uh, in tier 4 as well, making it be able to carry the M120 in a limited way and other upgrade after that with the full capabilities of the M120 in, an, in a distant future together with the SRAM missile or we can have two F3s so an early one with the four sky flashes 5000 temp and then an upgraded super temp and another F3 from the 90s with initially the super temp uh, being able to carry the M120 uh, in a tier 3 upgrade and then a tier 4 upgrade with the uh, full capabilities of the M120 and maybe in the far future the SRAM as well. So these would be the 2 to 4 variants that we should see in the UK. Uh, in Germany obviously they didn't use the ADV variant so they can only, only use the IDS and the ECR. Uh, the IDS was both used in the Luftwaffe and the Marineflieger. Flieger. <laughs> and the ECR was used in the Luftwaffe uh, but I think in the game we should see the IDS variant uh, as advanced bombers you know uh, under the IL-28 maybe I don't know uh, with just two M9s you know M9Ls and many many standard uh, NATO standard bombs and rockets and stuff like that this would be the GR-1 maybe it had upgrades after that but at first at least it would be just the GR-1 uh, and for e this would be basically the, the same, the only variant for Germans. Uh, yeah, with two or three maybe um, skins, you know, with the Marine Flieger and stuff like that. And for Italy, we they used the CR, the IDS, and the ADV, so they used all three variants. Uh, but I think in game we should see an IDS version, obviously, the same as the German one. Basically, a GR1 version, NATO standard bombs, two M9Ls, done okay and an ADV version uh, that should be a little tiny bit worse than what we have in the UK so the only difference between the UK version and the Italian version is that they were never upgraded to use better missiles so it would be just a normal ADV F3 the F3 variant with 4 M9Ls and the 5000 temps sky flashes so the normal sky flash that we have in game right now but with the trapeze, which improves the, m the energy a little bit. Okay, so these would be the variants, not many variants, but very cool ones. Uh, in the far future, uh, when we get seed, maybe, if we get seed, we can see the ECR versions, you know, but only if we have the seed inside the game. And the UK even used the F3 to a converted uh, kind of interceptor slash seed operation. So, yeah, that could be even a thing if they want to. And another very long, far away, maybe, 
is an F3 or IDS as a premium for the UK as a Saudi Arab Air Force, okay? In the far future, to be honest, far future, you would use the same missiles and stuff like that as the other F3s and IDSs, but it, with a different skin and stuff. Uh, but it would just make sense if we get stuff like the Eurofighters and then in a tier 8, I don't know, and then tier 7 is a needs a premium and then they add this uh, as a premium, you know. So I think they will not do that, probably. Uh, if they do that, we can expect stuff like premium F-14s and stuff like that, be because we are going to go into the 2000s. And then uh, 80s and 70s, 80s aircraft will be obsolete enough to be premiums, you know. Uh, but yeah, basically these, these are the variants, these are the performances of the aircraft. Very interesting aircraft, cannot wait to fly these. Uh, it is just, it has a very rich and very interesting story behind it, uh, history behind it. So yeah, it's just an amazing aircraft. I think uh, you should leave in the comments what you like the most about the, the Tornado, what versions do you like the most. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to make a, uh, a poll to see what aircraft we should see in the next uh, week's uh, video. But I'm thinking maybe F-111, maybe Su-34, maybe MiG-31, maybe F-15, or maybe the, the Su-27. But I hope you enjoyed, and I see you guys on the next one. Bye guys, subscribe.